Hi, this is Samantha Moore here from Vector Motorsports, and we're here with Engine Builder Magazine. This is episode two of our series with them. Today we're going to talk about ignition components, spark plugs, and how to choose the right items for your car and application, and get you ready for any modifications or dyno tuning appointments um, with regards to that. And the little guy behind me, his name's Rebel, and he's our shop cat, so he might be wandering around behind me. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, there's a lot to talk about with spark plugs. I'm not going to get in everything, but there's a, you know, obviously an important thing between the two. There's a taper or a conical and then a washer or a gasket style. Make sure when you select a spark plug, the first thing you look at is your heads and the manufacturer recommendation if you need the gasket or if you need the taper. I've actually had customers bring the wrong spark plugs in the car installed and that can cause severe damage to your heads or even your engine over time so make sure you choose the right spark plug with that. The other thing obviously is brand. There's a million brands out there uh, Brisk, NGK, E3, Autolite, stuff like that. I prefer Brisk. They make the best in my opinion for what we do at, here at our shop and GK also makes good plugs for different applications. The other thing you have to think about is the type of spark plug for your application, what you want to run. Brisk makes a silver racing plug, which we use in most of our stuff, especially with alcohol, ethanol, flex fuel. We like it because it burns really well. Um, it also does really well with ethanol fuels and showing fueling and timing and marks like that, so they're easy to read. There's platinum there's iridium, there's nickel, there's all kinds of different ones. So it just depends what your application, what you want to do is how you choose it based on that. Platinums obviously last longer, but they may or may not be good for racing depending on how much power you're making. One of the most important things is heat range. I'm not going to go into each uh, brand and their heat range, but you need to make sure, and this is a common issue we see here at the shop, when customers bring their cars in, they have the plug with the wrong heat range. If you add boost or any power adder to a motor, you really need to make sure you go a few steps colder depending on how much power you're adding. I've seen supercharged cars come in with stock plugs. That's really not recommended for several reasons. It can damage the motor. It's going to be more prone to detonation all that fun stuff. So make sure you get the right heat range. And if you need help, most shop owners and tuners will know how to explain and lead you down the right path. The other thing with the heat selection is you can't just go too cold. Otherwise you could have some issues with drivability, especially idle or cold start where you have misfire. So there is a fine line and balance. The other thing is a protruded versus non protruded plug. So when you're choosing a spark plug, you have to, based on the head and again your application, I keep saying that, but if you're building a car that normally has a protruded plug, meaning that the tip sticks out, then you add a 20 pounds of boost to it, it's more than likely not going to be happy and it's going to cause what I call blowout. I don't know if that's the exact right term or not, but basically the cylinder pressures get so high it actually blows the spark out. Um, so for that kind of application, we recommend a non-protruded plug. So you can see where the tip's actually down further into the plug. It's better for boost. So depending on what kind of, like I said, boost numbers you plan on running, you really want to consider that factor. They make different lengths as well too. And you have to, again, choose your right length for the cylinder head. You don't want to put this length into a cylinder head that takes this. Bad things could happen obviously valves could hit whatever you also don't want to put this in where you're supposed to have a longer one otherwise it won't reach and it won't fire at all so so when you go to get your car tuned your engine tuned um, or make again the modifications a huge thing is gap so spark plug gap will depend on how much boost you're running or nitrous or even na some people like to run a bigger gap, some smaller. If the cylinder pressures are high, typically you need a little bit of a shorter gap. The more power you make, the shorter it has to be. In A applications, you want it to be kind of as big as you possibly can within reason. And an important way and thing you need to do is make sure you have the proper tools to gap the plugs correctly. This is a really cool tool that allows you to use feeler gauges 
and actually presses and allows you to gap the plug correctly every time and it's very accurate. Um, and then obviously you can check it with the gap checker tool and <laughs> no. no. Now when you're installing the spark plug in your car, if, if your shop's not doing it and you are, another thing that's common with customers or people that aren't, you know, real keen on doing this, you have to make sure you torque your spark plug. And a lot of people, they just put it in until it's tight or good and tight or whatever they want to call it. I use a torque wrench, any torque wrench. Um, for my car specifically, it needs 15 foot pounds. The torque depends on the plug, the manufacturer of the plug, the head, and the what the head's made out of, if it's iron or aluminum. So make sure you check for the proper specs and your application to make sure you get the torque right. Again, you don't want them coming loose, and you also don't want them to be tight because you're going to cause damage to the spark plug holes over time. So when it comes to spark plugs, choosing the right one, like I said, various applications. I'm going to do a kind of a neat sample. You may have seen it or not. I have a little spark plug tester machine here. I'm going to pick a few different spark plugs with different heat ranges, gaps, protruded versus non. There's this new style out. It doesn't really have a ground strap per se. So I'll show you this and we can see the spark on each one as they are different. So now they're all in. Basically, we'll turn the machine on. I'll run it through its RPM. You can see the different spark. We'll get close-ups, and you can check out how the gap changes, stuff like that, and we'll see you go. This is a typical idle 700 RPM right here. A bigger cam race style car will go to 1200. So that's idle. And then we're going to go all the way up through the RPM to 7,000. So another important part of the ignition components are wires. You want to make sure you actually don't cheap out on these. Either stick with the OEM manufacturer um, wires or make sure you get a good aftermarket brand. Because this is what is transferring all the electricity into the spark plug, creating your spark. If you have really cheap wires or bad wires, you're going to have some issues. On the LS stuff especially, when you go with headers or any application really, most commonly what we recommend is socks. So you actually can put the sock over the wire. This prevents it from melting into the header causing misfires. There's you know a bunch of different sock manufacturers. Make sure you get a good set. <laughs> Here's an example of one actually it was black and you can see where it touched the header and saved the wire. So it helps prevent misfires or you know changing wires all the time if they melt. So we've talked about the plugs, the wires, the socks, so now we're going to talk a little about coils. Again the same thing, make sure you stick with a good manufacturer. Um, OEM is always the best. If you're going aftermarket, here's an example of a Holly Smart coil. These coils can produce a lot, they last a while. When a car comes in for tuning a lot, if we get a misfire, you know, we change coils over and see if it follows. Check your coils. Coils do go bad. This is a stock GM coil. They go bad all the time, you know, randomly. So make sure your coils are all good. Normally you can see them explode or you'll see weirdness. Or like I said, if you're getting a misfire and it follows the coil, obviously the coil's bad. So that's some common stuff we see on the dyno tuning a lot. The other thing when it comes to coils and wires and all this stuff, make sure your wiring harness, especially if you just built the car and rewired it, is properly grounded for the spark and ignition wiring. I've had a few instances on the dyno where you get random misfire, randomly running rough, 
and it turns out that the ignition coils were not properly grounded. They were either grounded to the chassis or the wrong spot. Ideally, they should be on the back of each head. When you go to put an aftermarket EFI system in like a Holly, a big stuff, anything like that, Another common thing people don't think about, check the timing. Make sure you check the static timing using a timing light. Simple, people don't think about it sometimes. Some systems don't require it. Obviously a stock system doesn't require it. Some aftermarkets don't require it, but it's always good to check timing. Make sure it matches the ECU. We had a customer come in and he had his car tuned completely somewhere else. It wasn't running right, it was running weird. I started tuning it, it had an EFI system in it, and I noticed that the timing I was putting in didn't match what it should have been for a normal LS car. So some a red flag went off. I checked the timing, it was 20 degrees off advanced. So that did some damage obviously to the motor at the previous shop so let's just say it cost him a motor unfortunately check the timing so overall that is pretty much it when it comes to ignition spark plugs all the stuff like that most shops will be able to tell you everything you need to know it'd be good to go over everything make sure all your wires are grounded your coils are good your wires save time on the dyno save money at the end of the day so in conclusion make sure you have the right plugs proper gap, proper heat range, proper gasket versus taper. Go through everything, check it, make sure it's ready. It'll save you time and money on the dyno at the end of the day and potentially your motor. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out or talk to your shop or your tuner. They should know most answers to any of these questions. On the next episode, we'll be talking about fuel injectors and fuel systems and how to choose the right one for your application. This is Sam, out. <laughs>